Good evening, everyone. Um, how many of you had a chance to read the blog that went out yesterday? Oh, good. The rest of you can leave. Uh, no, I only ask that just because I'm going to speak uh, specifically to a part of it. Um, and I wanted to know how deep I should get into it. The, uh, what I'm going to read is from uh, the first talk that the Buddha gave upon his awakening. Uh, this was actually two weeks or so after he woke up to the true nature of reality. He was speaking to uh, five of his buddies. They were five uh, wandering ascetics that... that uh, the Buddha, before he was a Buddha, uh, hung out with, and they, they practice uh, different types of um, rather extreme um, physical and mental and spiritual disciplines um, that the Buddha eventually realized uh, were of no benefit, at least to him, and to what he was after, which was awakening to the true nature of reality. Um, and so the Buddha spoke very... Um, directly about what it means to be awakened, at least as far as what he was teaching. And um, considering that he was speaking to um, more or less normal people, you know, everyday people, um, the implication is that anybody can awaken. You know, there was nothing special about these five fellows. In fact, this is the same teaching that he gave throughout the course of his teaching, throughout 45, for 45 years, um, to every single person, no matter what their their position was in life. Um, he didn't change his teachings. His teachings um, don't have different levels. There's no hidden meaning in what the Buddha was trying to teach. There's no symbolism um, in what um, in what even developed um, from directly from the Buddha. It's just this. And so the Buddha was describing what awakening means um, in relation to the Four Noble Truths. So, um, in this same talk to his buddies, uh, the Buddha first laid out what the Four Noble Truths are. And the question came to the Buddha, well then, I, you know, the, one of them said, I can't remember who it was, said, I kind of get that, but so how does, this, how does this relate to awakening? And the Buddha's response was, the Noble Truth of Dukkha, of suffering, has been comprehended. An awakened person comprehends exactly what Dukkha is. So Dukkha, the First Noble Truth is, that life is stressful, life is dukkha, life is um, disappointing, disillusion, disillusioning. Um, and what the Buddha means by comprehended is not an intellectual understanding. We all know what stress is. And I know the first time I came across the first noble truth, my, uh, my surface understanding was, well, yeah, I mean, I've had some stressful incidents in my life. I had some times that I was suffering. But I didn't get what the Buddha was really saying, that at, just as a consequence of being in this world, there is stress. And there's nothing we can do about it. So the teachings of the Buddha are not how to avoid stress or suffering. They're not, it's not even how to get out of it. What it is is how to recognize it and not perpetuate it by our own actions. We comprehend it. Um, there was a great book that came out many years ago, one of my favorite books called The Stranger in a Strange Land. How many people read that book? I'm the only one, uh, by Robert Heinlein. And in that book, uh, I won't go into what the whole book is about, but there's a character um, that uh, an alien being um, who, has, who can meet somebody and understand their complete nature understand everything that that person is about, and, this, and Michael was his name, and Michael could understand the, the nature of everything. And the word that they used in this novel was grok, G-R-O-K. And that's what the Buddha was talking about, in this comprehend, the, what he meant by comprehending the first noble truth. It's not just an intellectual understanding of suffering. It's that we really get it. We understand that life in the phenomenal world is stressful. It just is. And he goes on... Um, to explain why that is, uh, give me a second. Now this, monks, is the noble truth of stress. Birth is stressful, aging is stress stressful, death is stressful, sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress, and despair are stressful. 
Association with those loathed is stressful. Separation from the loved is stressful. Not getting what is wanted is stressful. Receiving what one desires to avoid is stressful. In short, the five clinging aggregates are, are stressful. The five clinging aggregates, aggregates are simply um, how we perceive reality through our senses. So what he's saying there is just as a consequence of being in the world, we're going to experience stress. And it begins right with birth. You know, and everybody remembers how stressful birth was. Um, <laughs> at least we're told, um, we're left this, we were, we're forced out of this really nice, warm, enclosed environment into this cold, bright place. Most of us are slapped by somebody we don't know almost immediately, and that's the beginning of our experience. And then it gets worse, you know. Um, as a consequence of having a physical body, sickness is, go is going to uh, take over every one of us. We're all going to experience sickness. Um, eventually, we're going to get old. We're going to experience that. We're going to die. In between that time from birth to death, we're going to have these experiences of, of um, not getting what we want and getting what we don't want. All that causes stress. And there's nothing, the Buddhist pointing out, there's nothing that we can do about that. It has, it has nothing to do with the type of people we are. It has nothing to do with whether God is shining down on us. It has nothing to do with whether we got a whole lot of bad luck in our life. It's just a consequence of living. Some people's lives seem to be more difficult than others, but everybody who lives in this physical world, in the phenomenal world, is going to experience stress. So the Buddha pointed that out. He said, don't worry about it. He said, don't take any of it personal. Understand it. And understand it at, on a deep level that we just accept it and we don't fight it anymore. You know? That's the beginning of understanding the Buddha's teaching because we have to know where we are. We have to know where, where we exist. We exist in a phenomenal world where stress arises. Stress arises naturally. We're not responsible for a lot of it. A lot of it is just a consequence of living in the world. Um, people do things that, that we don't understand um, that at least initially hurts us. And we try to figure out why it happens. Why do people act this way? Why did this happen to me? Did I do something to cause this? Most of the time, it's, it's, it's completely impersonal. People do things because they're ignorant of what, they're, what we're all about. You know, even people that are acting in an aggressive and competitive way, and it ends up hurting us, they don't understand really what they're doing and the consequences of their actions. Uh, there's natural things that happen in the world, big snowstorms, earthquakes, volcanoes, all that kind of stuff. You know, that's part of living here. It's part of, of, of just the stress of living in the world. Understand it and accept it, that that's what's going on. Don't fight it. The great peace and freedom comes by just accepting that and seeing that on a real deep level. So spiritual practice, at least what the Buddha was talking about, is not a way to escape that. It's not a way to avoid it. It's not a way to manipulate it. It's not a way to gain favor with a higher being so it doesn't happen to us. No matter what we do, life is going to be stressful. But what we can get out of life, if we put away all the clinging and craving and desire that it be different than it is, is a deep and meaningful existence in this present moment. And that's what mindfulness is all about. It means being deeply aware of life exactly as it is and not wanting it to be any different. And then we can start uh, a deep understanding of who we are and what, what we're really doing here, which is to awaken to the true nature of reality. So we start with the first noble truth, just accepting that. In, in practice, um, especially in this practice, uh, a, a, a practice that's deeply rooted in meditation, we can start looking at meditation as that relief from stress. You know, and, it, and it really can be experienced that way. We've had a really rough day. Well, let's go meditate and we can put the day behind us and we feel better. And that's okay. It's not that we shouldn't enjoy that aspect of, of the stress-relieving capabilities of meditation, but it's much deeper than that. You know, so we, we get into meditation. We start to relax. That's the beginning of shamatha vipassana. Our minds start to quiet down. Allow that to happen, and then go deeper than that. It's not just about feeling good. It's not just about having a pleasant, relaxed experience in meditation. It's about getting beyond all of that desire and settling into who we deeply are, into our, our core essence, past that, that stress <coughs> that's caused by living in a phenomenal world. Because who we are, in essence, is something that is a part of the phenomenal world, world but much much larger than that, and beyond that. Actually, the correct term is before that. 
You know, there's a, there's a, a famous Zen saying is, what was your face before your parents were born? Face meaning your nature. What was our nature before our parents were born? To think about that. There was something that existed that manifested as this physical form. And there's something that's going to exist after this physical form is gone. What is that? That's our true and essential nature. That's the part of us that is completely unaffected by the phenomenal world, by the stress of the phenomenal world. And so the Buddha is pointing towards that, towards that true and essential nature. When he's saying, because we've, we're here now, we're going to experience that stress. Don't fight it. Stop fighting it. Stop expecting it to be different than it is. And learn to relax into your own true and essential nature. And that's what this meditation practice that we do is about. Shamatha Vipassana, Shamatha quieting the mind, Vipassana gaining insight. It's not insight into some mystical understanding. It's insight into the fact that, yes, life is stressful, but it's not part of me. It's just part of this experience that I'm in that I can't do anything about, except I can take care of my spiritual well-being. So the next three weeks I'll talk about the second noble truth and what the Buddha uh, meant in, in relation to awakening and the second noble truth and the third and the fourth. You know, so it's not just the Buddha stating these are the, the truths of existence in the phenomenal world. You can't do anything about it. He said this is the truth of our existence. And if you do this, you can put it all behind. You can leave your, yourself unaffected by it. And the beginning is accepting that, yes, this is what life is like. It's stressful. It doesn't mean that, it, that life is, is awful or miserable. It's not something that we should go through grudgingly. Life is incredible, and it's incredible because we get to understand who we are if we do it right. You know? If we put aside all the desires that things be different than they are and learn to look at ourselves closely. You know? Clear seeing, clear knowing, that's what insight means.